Hello and welcome. This is a podcast from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I am Chris, also with a K. And thank you for joining me today. Uh, last time I talked about AI and some thoughts, you know, I had on AI in the future, you know, good and bad, but completely unknown. Um, but today let's talk a little bit about more in the aspect of free and open source software. So... As you probably know, I am a huge advocate of free and open source software. I think all software should be free and open source, not to say that developers shouldn't be paid. Obviously, there's difference between, and that's what a lot of people don't get, is uh, when we say free software, the software is free, as in freedom, uh, and you can sell copies of it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the developers shouldn't be paid. One's a uh, you know, a service, and the other one's trying to pretend something is a product that isn't a product. Anyway, getting into the AI thing, a lot of things I've seen talking about AI talks about uh, AI creating software. So software that creates software, basically, software that writes out code. And I want to know what you guys think about that. Um, if that, I guess there is software that's kind of doing that now, but if it gets to the point where you can tell a piece of software, I need software that does this, and it creates a program, do you think that's good or bad for free and open source software? I mean, you think about it, a lot of the AI being developed is by big companies. And it'd be great for them to be able to have software that would create new programs for them. But if that's the case, then anyone who gets a copy of the software, even if it's a proprietary piece of software, if it was leaked, now all of a sudden you can have it start creating free and open source software. And yeah, there, you know, you can be like, oh, well, they can maybe they can license it to where you can't you know, you have to release software that's created by their software and a certain license, but yeah, good luck with that. If it's right in the source code, how are you going to know uh, what machine made it? And you, you can try to hide stuff in the source code, but if you knew what to look for, you can always remove that. But just imagine if in the free and open source software, software world, someone had AI that could write software for you. It could create, you just say, I need software that does this and it creates it. It would just like overnight eliminate Microsoft and Apple and all these big software companies and all of a sudden all software would be open source and and hopefully free if, if, if you you know it's just like whatever you need you just tell this piece of software again this is completely theoretical who knows if this will ever happen I, I guess it's happening at, you know again in, in minor uh, uses now but to, if, if it ever did just theoretically got to the point where you can just tell your computer hey write a program that does this and it writes a program that does that it would completely change everything. Google, I mean, Google probably still will be around because a lot of their, they don't make uh, so much money off of, you know, uh, selling of software. And to Google it's, is, is really all about service. So even if I wrote my own search engine, I would still need means, uh, machines to run it. And that would cost a lot to share it with the world. Although I could always write my own uh, search engine and use it on my own servers, but it would still have to crawl the web for you, which takes a lot of processing power. So I think Google would probably be okay. But look at Apple and Microsoft. It's like all of a sudden, all their products would not be needed. Because, uh, I mean, Office, I mean, really, they're not needed nowadays, you know? So maybe they'd be okay. Because there's LibreOffice, which, in my opinion, is just as good as Microsoft Office for everything I need to do and everything most people need to do. I'm sure that Microsoft Office has some features that maybe some businesses need, and LibreOffice may have some features that that, that, that doesn't have. Um, it all depends on your usage, but most usage, LibreOffice is just as good as Microsoft Office, in my opinion, better. I think it, it takes up less system resources, runs on more uh, architectures and devices and operating systems. It's just more um, flexible of a software than Microsoft Office. Obviously costs less since it doesn't cost anything and Microsoft Office costs hundreds of dollars depending on what version you get and what they restrict you on. Uh, but at the same time, I see so many times businesses using Office software spreadsheets and Word documents where uh, they really should be using specific software for those uses. Well, they'll create forms in or, or spreadsheets to fill stuff out when really you should have form, but how great would it be to be like, oh, I need, uh, you know, uh, I need to create a contact list for my clients, have these type of fields, and poof, it creates it. Just you know, speaking into a microphone and say that, uh, people would have specific software for their companies doing specifically what they need, and they wouldn't have to pay these companies. But then at the same time, now we have developers, even the open source and, and free software developers who normally get paid for writing software are now out of a job. Woo! But, but so much could be done. It would just change the world. It really would. Um, but it'd also be weird because would everybody be using 
different software. Like I go to a friend's computer and his his computer is running nothing I've ever seen before because it's all software he created, his computer created for him. That'd be weird. That would be so weird. But games, I mean, as I talked in the last talk, there's already software that generates assets for games and 3D environments. And does a great job just using reference photos, creating new things. So graphics and, and, and a assets for games are being created. What happens if AI can now create, you say, oh, I want a first person shooter. Uh, I want the first person shooter to, uh, you know, have a setting of a tropical place with palm trees with a lake. And I want there to be fish in the lake that can jump out. And uh, I want you to be able to uh, go swimming in the water. And it creates that. And they're like, okay, now add functionality that uh, if I uh, go too far out, uh, a shark comes and eats me. And, and the software creates that. How awesome would that be? Um, and then you could share that, like, because it's like you could still, I guess you'd still be, you wouldn't be writing the code, you'd be sharing it. You, you, you could create it just by saying that and be like, hey, this is what I created. And someone go, oh, that's cool. I created something similar to that, but with different functionality. And then maybe you can tell, hey, uh, computer, take these two programs and merge them together because I create a, a program with a volcano. And, you know, by saying create a volcano, uh, or would you do that? Or would you just tell the first program to add a volcano? I don't know. It would be so weird. Again, all theoretical. Um, but at the same time, would that lead to obviously less people writing code? Because I love writing code, but at the same time, if I could just tell the computer created software that does this, it would. Uh, and who knows whether it would make it more efficient than I would? Because maybe it would write everything in assembly directly, you know? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I like writing code. I like understanding software. And But would I do it as much if the computer would write it? And would that be I would I would think that would be a bad thing because we would have less less understanding of computers and when we get to a point where nobody knew how software was written anymore you know it's like cuz nobody did it and we just relied on the computers for everything again I don't know what do you think let me know comment uh on this podcast let me know what you think I think it's just an interesting thing to think about. I thank you for watching or, or listening. Uh, visit filmsbychris.com, Chris the K. Also think about supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash melix1000. I thank you for listening. And again, I hope that you have a great day.